people, there's so many different ways of engaging consumers and customers through the digital channel that goes far beyond what you could do on a face-to-face -face basis. When you say digital engagement for a financial brand, what do you mean by that? Anything in, that fits anywhere between a interaction, a transaction. I mean, look, checking your account balance is probably the, you know, in terms of the level of emotional engagement that somebody has with the bank for people who, you know, are not at, at you know, danger of being at zero all the time. You know, checking your account balance is kind of low, you know, invo emotional involvement or engagement. But that is still engagement, and especially for people who are at the low end of the income spectrum or have, especially like gig workers whose incomes, uh, you know, are, are very unpredictable and, and, and variable. Uh, knowing that account balance is important, having it access, but taking it to the next step. Well, what do I do about this? And so, you know, sometimes you might have a question about something that comes up and you want to ask, you know, having that ability to ask a question and get an answer, maybe through a chat bot or something like that is a form of digital engagement. But what I think of is going up the scale to the more emotionally involved things come around, well, what should I do? What should I do to better manage my financial life? You know, you can't just walk into the branch five times a week and, and say, well, what, what should I do? You know, let's just talk about this. But you can do that online. You can do that through digital channels. There's, you know, whether it's through content, whether it's through watching videos of, of advisors talk about things, whether it's looking at data and how your financial life compares to other people. There's so many different ways of engaging consumers and customers through the digital channel that goes far beyond what you could do on a face-to-face -face basis. And, you know, I wouldn't actually throw away the face-to-face -face basis either, Vlad. You know, everybody talks about branches not being dead or being dead. I definitely think we're on the, you know, on the path of closing down the branches. And let me explain why. Uh, let's take a step back and answer the question, why do we have branches in the first place? And one of the reasons, I guess it goes back maybe 70, 80 years ago at this point, I really don't know, but some smart person in some bank said, hey, you know what? As people are moving out to the suburbs from the, from the urban areas, it's a pain in the neck for them to have to come into the city and get to this one big building we have here in the center of the city to have them interact with us. Why don't we build a smaller building out closer to where they are, put a few people in there, and make it more convenient for them? It was a convenience aspect. And it was a way of, of having an ability for customers to interact with people from the bank in a more convenient way. Now, as technology has evolved, you know, what happened? Well, it was a lot easier to pick up the phone and call. So the banks developed huge call centers over time to make it easy. It was all about convenience and also about staff and cost because this way you didn't have to have a million people in, in the branches. You could have a team of people in the call center. But as the digital channels have been created and evolved, this is where we have stopped seeing the, the evolution. And, you know, I would put out to you, Vlad, that we are sitting here today using a technology that enables us to have a face-to-face -face conversation without us having to be in the same room we are hundreds of miles apart from each other. This is pretty easy and convenient, right? Why aren't banks doing this? Why aren't banks enabling their customers to have video chats with the people that they need to contact? I Look, I'm the first person to say, I hate getting on the phone. I don't want to talk to somebody on the phone. I can't deal with that. But this is a great way of interacting. And by the way, if you needed to see, oh, you, you know, Lamont, what are you talking about when you say that? What's on your statement? I'm going to say, oh, I can pop that right up. Right. I can go here. We can share the screen. We can do this. This technology obviates the need for the branch.
Last point I'd make on this, there was a bank CEO here in the U.S. who had started a, a, a bank back in the 70s that became very well known for its branch service. And in the early 2000s, uh, he was interviewed by one of the big bank magazines or publications, and they asked him, well, why aren't you making big investments in the Internet? And he said, because nobody wants a relationship with a machine. And he might have a good point there, but my retort to him would be, but nobody wants a relationship with a brick. It's not about the brick and mortar that people want from a branch, it's the interaction. And reality today is that technology provides a better mechanism, not just for engaging people on a day-to-day -day basis when it's not intermediated by another person, but even when it is intermediated by another person. So this is why digital engagement as a whole becomes so important because it's not just about you know, looking at an online screen or online content, it, it also is about providing capabilities to provide the, the, the human interaction. Uh, and that's why this sort of human plus digital becomes so important for banks going forward.